Hey there. Uh, today's video, I prepped a long time ago, but I'm finally getting around to doing so. Some of these might be a little bit dated. Um, I actually made this or prepped this in response to a video that um, Cindy Goodhart Baldo had done like months ago. This is a while ago, but it's still relevant. Whatever. I'm going to tell you today about the stuff that I can't or won't do with my planner system. Um, some of them are can'ts and some won'ts, you'll see. <laughs> I'm just gonna go down a list. Um, first thing I can't do, I just can't wrap my mind around multiple planners or having a separate planner that stays at home and a separate one that's like your everyday carry. Uh, I've tried it briefly. Um, I tried it uh, once where I was transitioning from a traveler's notebook to rings, but I um, had already like prepped all of my videos in the traveler's notebook. Um, and so I didn't want you guys to like know that I had transitioned over to rings yet. Um, and basically what I ended up doing was just duplicating everything in both. And I would actually literally go through and check stuff off on both. Um, because like I need to just have the same system and I need to have everything with me at all times. If it's in a planner, it needs to be in my carry planner um, that I bring with me. So I just, I can't do multiple things. And the next thing I can't really do uh, anymore is the A5 size. I um, used the Clever Fox planner last month uh, for a week and you can see all of those videos in the playlist. Um, it was fine for what it was, but I really feel like it's too much size. Like I started bullet journaling in an A5, like most of you do. I started in a moleskin. Um, and sometimes I will look through Instagram and Reddit and I'll see pretty spreads on A5 size pages. And it makes me want something like that, that lets me spread out. But honestly, it just feels too big when I'm there. I need a smaller piece of paper that I can fill up easier. And it just, it just feels more manageable to me. Um, like I'm not wasting paper that way, you know? The next thing, um, I, this is just something I'm not very good at, is sticker shopping. Um, I sometimes feel like I want to use more stickers, especially if I'm in a printable or something with a structure. I feel like I like using stickers in, those kinds of spreads, but I'm not very good at shopping for them. Um, I think I'm like lured in by the marketing photos and stuff that are also pretty, uh, the color gradients and rainbows and everything. But when it comes to actually picking something I'm going to use, um, it's, it's difficult. So either I will buy something that I end up never using or I will spend so much time trying to find something that's perfect that I never end up actually pulling the trigger and making the purchase. <laughs> so I have just like my Etsy cart just sitting there with like ideas that I never end up actually purchasing and I feel like I need to figure that out. <laughs> Next thing I don't do in my paper planner at all is budgeting. Um, the closest thing I have is one spread where I track um, our payments, or not our payments even, but just how much of our uh, student loans we still have left to pay and how much has been paid off. But even that I don't go back to more than every couple of months at this point because it's so slow to fill out. I think if I had, um, if I had it in each box as a small enough amount that I would be able to fill them in frequently, it would take up multiple pages. I wanted it all to fit on one page. And so each block is like $250, which takes a long time to pay off when you've got interest to deal with. And there's multiple loans. And anyway, I can't do any budgeting stuff on paper. It's just too complicated. I prefer using, um, you know, digital resources, generally spreadsheets and YNAB and websites and Mint and all of that. Um, it's just easier for me. It's something that I don't do on paper. Um, the next one, I feel like is kind of a given if you know me at all. I don't do no white space planning. Obviously, if I'm not good at stickers, I'm not good at that. But I feel like that has to go on everyone's list. Um, it's cool for people who do. I don't personally see the appeal 
Um, but I do, I guess, understand the appeal of sticker kits. But since I've never used a planner that sticker kits are meant for, like if I can't deal with an A5, I can't deal with an Erin Condren um, or a happy planner that's that big. Uh, so obviously I'm not the target audience for those kits. It would be cool if there were kits that were made for like Peanuts Planner Co. or something. Um, but until that happens, it's not even something that's on my radar. But anyway, I like lots of white space, or at least I end up with lots of white space. Um, one thing I have tried before, I have tried multiple times to do planner charms. I had cute little uh, fla like felt flowers that were on my traveler's notebooks for a while. I had these little key charms, uh, different things here and there. And just it's they end up like the last time I tried them on here, they broke. Um, and in any case, they end up getting messy or just banged up. I'm just too hard on my planner. I pull it in and out of my purse all the time. I want to be able to have it accessible where I can pull it out quickly, open it up, find my page, write down a quick note, close it and put it back in my purse. Um, and having things dangling, um, it, it, it's just not good for them. Um, and so I ended up just taking it off and I don't think I'm planning to go back to any of that kind of external decoration anytime soon. Um, the next decoration thing that I kind of almost wish that I did know how to do because I think they're adorable, um, like in photos, is die cuts. Um, I don't really get them. I don't get the purpose of them. I don't get where do you find them. I can't in my mind justify paying money for a digital thing that you're just going to print out and stick in a pocket to look at. And I've never seen anything that was cute enough that I would want to do that. So I'm not even sure what are die cuts? What is the point? I, I want to know, but I don't. <laughs> and the next two things I think I see a lot, um, I, I'm on the uh, various bullet journaling reddits a lot. Um, and these are sort of trends over there that might sort of be on the wane, but I'm seeing a lot of um, monthly cover pages and mood trackers, like monthly mood trackers. Also setting up your planner months in advance. I see that a lot um, on Reddit for some reason. People will post like, oh, I couldn't help it. I had to set up my October spread already. And it's like, wait, we're still in August. Where are you putting all of your August pages? I don't know. Um, so yeah, so I don't really do cover spreads. Um, I, I guess I do dividers, um, but just the idea of like dedicating a page just to saying what month it is, it just, I guess it's too much work and it's just not something that I've ever seen to be useful or necessary, so I don't. Um, and then the mood tracker thing, like I don't know why they became popular, but I'm seeing really elaborate and beautiful mood trackers where somebody just takes a drawing like a black and white line art thing and then they assign colors and they fill it out you know they'll like maybe number them so it looks like a paint by numbers thing and then they're like filling in sometimes two or three times a day what their mood is um i have tried tracking my mood not in an artistic way um i tried doing it once on like a period tracker to see what the correlation was and i had maybe six different sort of gradients of mood and it was hard just to decide which one I was feeling predominantly like usually when I'm sitting down to fill out my planner I'm feeling pretty good um, about life and so but does that mean that I felt good the rest of the day maybe I'm not introspective enough and that's my problem but I also just don't think that I have the time and the inclination to make an elaborate artistic spread uh, just to track my mood if I don't, especially if I don't have like a reason to use the data later. Um, like I tracked my mood relation to my period and then went, okay, that's great. That seems to confirm what I already suspected that PMS makes me feel crummy. Okay. And then I stopped doing it. Um, so I guess that's, I don't want to bash what anybody else does and what works for them. Um, and obviously 
there's a gradient in how much you decorate uh, that works for some people and not others and that's fine um, but I guess this video is just to say that's not for me um, I don't do mood trackers anymore <laughs> like that so that's all I had but I want to know below what do you think what are your planner can'ts or won'ts um, it's all different maybe some of the things that I say Maybe you think I'm wrong. Maybe you think I haven't given um, one of these things a fair shake and I need to try it differently and I'd love it. Let me know that below. Let me know what you don't like, what you do like. I wanna start a conversation. So we'll do all of that in the comments below. Subscribe so you don't miss my videos every Thursday and Sunday and I will see you guys in the next one, all right? Bye.